Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nairi, also known as Wedding Fashion Expert. Today, we are in Lavella Bridal. I have had so many subscribers write in asking about different type of veil options, how they should choose their veil, price points, what determines the price, what style should they go with. So much to uncover in this week's video. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. I am so honored that you have found me. I am, of course, a wedding fashion expert, stylist, buyer, wear so many different hats at Lavella Bridal and a wedding industry educator. For daily content, be sure to follow us at Lavella Bridal, at Lavella Plus, and at Wedding Fashion Expert on Instagram. You can also subscribe for exclusive weekly content on my Instagram, at Wedding Fashion Expert. Be sure to also follow us at Lavella Bridal and at Wedding Fashion Expert on TikTok for daily content as well. Let's dive in to everything veils related. I am going to first start with placement of veil. You'll notice that I have it placed right at the crown of my head. I like it to show a little bit, but I don't like it too high and I don't like it too low because then it looks like it's coming out of your neck. So obviously, depending on your hairstyle, you and your stylist can determine where to properly place your veil. However, this is more or less the area that I personally love to place it. I have specifically picked this dress to style with different veils because I wanted something that had a little bit of embellishment so that you could see no matter if you go with a completely plain dress or something that has detail, your various options. So this is kind of an in-between where you can truly wear any veil that you want. It's totally up to you. I am just going to give you things to consider when you're picking your veil. First, I started off with this short veil for you to see with a little bit of a trim. It has a pearl crystal trim and I've also added a blusher. I won't be putting a blusher on for every single veil I showed you, so I just wanted to start off with it. Here's what the blusher looks like. When it comes to holding your bouquet, I recommend that you rest your forearms on your hip bones and think to yourself, my bouquet is so heavy, I need to rest it on my hip bones. I like the blusher this long because your bouquet is going to hold it away from your face so it doesn't get too close and smush down and wrinkle for photos like this. So you want it a little bit longer. I personally like the length of this. I like it to be right where about my hip bones fall. Now, another thing to consider is that this blusher is actually detachable. So I am a huge fan of having your blusher be separate. Now, of course, that totally depends on different styles of veils and what you end up going with. There is certain veils the blusher is attached and it just looks like it's falling over your head, kind of like how Kate Middleton's veil looked. She didn't have any gather, it was completely flat. That's a whole different ball game. That is a specific type of veil, which I also think is absolutely stunning. However, the reason why I like it separate on a comb is because it gives you a little bit more versatility, right? So you can choose to put it in for this ceremony only and take it off the other option now this particular veil is short the one thing to consider with a short veil is it does create an interruption in the back of the dress I am particularly a huge fan of a long cathedral length veil. That is always going to be my pick because it just elongates, has no interruption from behind, and it really just elevates and makes the look a little bit more dramatic. Taking you back to why I like the blusher separate. So if you went with a long veil, which I'm going to show you what that looks like, you can then take off your cathedral length veil and have your blusher in if you wanted to go into your reception with a little bit of a fun veil moment. You take off your long veil and you enter in with the short veil. I also love that if you're going to do short, I like an unfinished trim to it because it just kind of makes it a little bit more effortless and doesn't create as much of an interruption as something with the trim. Not to say that this is bad, I am merely giving you your options and my personal opinion I love a little bit of drama. So I would opt for this just longer. All right, let me show you your next veil option. I'll be right back, I'm gonna grab that veil. I wanted to show you what I was talking about earlier. Here is another shorter veil. Love the length of this because it's kind of at the fingertip. Visually, I do like the proportion of this veil. Now here's an example of the blusher being attached. So 
Here is the blusher that's completely attached. It's all one piece as you can see. And it also has a trim. Now, something to consider, when you flip it over, the trim is backwards, so the trim is actually on that side. That's something to consider if that does bother you. And do keep in mind that it does leave a line visually. When you're picking veils, you definitely want to consider the way in which they are going to photograph. So I always recommend trying on all the veils, looking at yourself in the mirror, and also looking at a photo at the same exact time. While you are in the dress, while you are looking in the mirror and looking at the photo and deciding. Something to really consider about veils. So many brides tell me, I don't really care about the veil, I may not even wear a veil because I'm only gonna have it on for 20, 30 minutes, an hour max for the ceremony and for photos. But even though you're physically not wearing the veil that long, your photos of you in the veil last a lifetime. And some of the photos that photographers take of brides in their veils are the most dramatic moments. Those are pictures that are often selected to be framed in your home. So you do want to consider that and not compromise on the veil. Don't just think about how long you're going to be wearing it, but the photos that live on for generations to come. Another component to consider as well, when you buy your dress, buy your veil at the same time because you want to make sure the colors align with the dress along with the design of it. So many stores do sell samples. Your sample may not be available. When you go back in store, you might say, hey, I just wanna buy my dress. I'll come back to do my veil. But what if they don't have the dress? It just makes things a little bit more complicated. Actually, a lot more complicated. So buy them together. Your life will be so much easier to have it crossed off your to-do list. And some brides say, oh, well, I'll wait for my dress to come in and then I'll order my veil. That's also not a good idea because oftentimes veils can take four to six months to order, depending on the manufacturer, depending on what style you go with. So doing it with the dress is highly, highly, highly recommended. Don't make your life more complicated. See it all together on in person, look at the photos and make your selection. Now I'm going to move on to a longer veil. I want you to see what that looks like because this does create an interruption in the back of the dress. I want you to really see what it looks like to be fully elongated and the different options that you can consider. Wanted to show you what a cathedral length raw edge veil looks like. I wanted you to see it from behind so you could really see the elongation of the veil and how gorgeous that looks. This look is a classic staple piece for bridal. It's my go-to and the first veil that I put on all my brides. To give you context on price point, this veil is $495 and the first veil I had on is $450. The second veil I had on is $400. So when you look at the cost of shorter veils with that trim detail on it, and then you compare it to something long and dramatic like this. For me, it's a no brainer to go with something like this that's elongating, more drama. I have so many subscribers asking the difference in quality of veils and price points and why are veils in bridal stores more expensive than what you see on Amazon. What you get on Amazon is a completely different style of tool. It depends which brand you go with and what it is, but it's far less quality. And the reason why the price on this veil is what it is, is the width of the veil. It is very, very wide. What you get on Amazon is super narrow, literally like one third of the width of this is what you're gonna get on Amazon for what, $20, $40, whatever it is. So I oftentimes have brides get veils from Amazon and they come back and they end up buying this. So you end up wasting more money and time and energy. If you see a veil you love, go for it. Now I'm going to show you and tell you the different price points of different cathedral length veils that you can consider with different types of detail so you see what that will look like as well. Also keep in mind, any of the veils that I am trying on, you can always buy the blusher separately and add that to any of the veils that you are seeing. Most blushers on average can be anywhere from $99 to $150. It depends on the length, the width, and the quality of the tool that is being used. This is a cathedral length veil with a satin trim. This veil is priced at $550. Also notice, of course, the width of the veil. That is really the 
big difference between veils that you see in stores and veils that you see elsewhere, as I mentioned before. Something to consider with a veil that is long with a trim, it does obviously photograph with an outline. I also recommend taking a video of you moving in it and seeing how the veil kind of moves with the trim. It does highlight where the veil is exactly located and what it looks like, whereas if you go with a raw edge, it just kind of gets lost and is invisible and not as much of an eye-catching moment. In next week's video, you will be seeing how veils and trains move. There's no way to keep it 100% perfect all the time. So you'll be seeing that in next week's video, but this is one that I recommend seeing how it moves and being okay if you like how it photographs if the line is not beautifully spread out like you see here. I'll just quick turn around so you can kind of see how it falls from the front as now we'll move on to the next veil option that you could consider. Here is a beautiful hand beaded with pearl and crystal trim. Really, really gorgeous. I love how it cascades in the front. It's so pretty. Something to consider with movement as you move, this will also shift back. So you kind of want to make sure that the veil you pick you love in all the different ways in which you can wear it. This particular veil is priced at $9.50. Again, I love the way it frames with this particular dress. This is a really stunning option to consider with it. Here is a beautiful raw edge veil with pearl scattered detail throughout, priced at $650 US dollars. And this is really fun, cute, classic, a little bit of modern spin to it. Something to consider in photos, just because I have to say it, is sometimes the pearls can photograph as a bunch of dots and spots throughout the veil. So take photo and video, but with the right dress, it is a really special, fun, and super cute veil to consider. Here is an extremely long veil that has sparkle edging, so it's more dense at the edging and then it kind of ombre scatters throughout and gets even more dense at the bottom. It's so long, I know it's out of frame. I'm gonna pull it so that you can see the edge of it a little bit more, but there's so much fabric here. It's really, sparkle veils are so lovely and so gorgeous. However, something to consider is that it's more for an in-person appeal than for it to be captured by video and photo. You do lose some of that detail when you're taking photos and videos of it, but in person, it's so gorgeous and just sparkles. This particular veil is priced at $7.25. Last but not least, this is our last veil to consider. I have shown you all the various options when it comes to clean, simple, trim, scattered detail throughout, and here is a beautiful lace veil that has embellishment and some crystal throughout it. This veil is priced at $850. Look at how much beauty it adds to the dress, just really elevating the look. It's going to photograph beautifully. I particularly love the way in which the lace comes up and just adds to the dress. And if you turn around, I love where the lace begins. It's dense design at the top and the skirt gets a little bit empty so this fills in that negative space so beautifully just becoming an extension of the dress and that's how I would personally style this particular dress or any dress that has details of any kind. I'm always looking for the veil to be an extension of it, really elevating that look, creating more drama for photos and videos. I am going to lastly show you what this would look like with a blusher and a bouquet so you can get the full look. I'll be right back. Here is the complete look with blusher, bouquet. Just wanted to show you what the finished product would look like. And this is it. So this is what I was talking about when I had mentioned that you can take the long veil off and just leave the short veil on for reception if you wanted to. I hope that you found this video helpful. For more videos and tips like these, be sure to tune in every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I will see you in next week's video.